Hello friends, I am Dr. Amarjit Kaur. I am Professor of Accounting and Communication at Gurugram University in the Department of Management. I have been working from the last 30 years in the education and food industry. I have authored about 8 books and 56 research paper. I am very fortunate to having worked with uh, private as well as public sector in India and in overseas universities as well. It's my privilege that I'm present here uh, to discuss on communication. Two different uh, non-verbal communication is the agenda we are going to talk about today. So, uh, in the first half, we are going to take uh, one branch of non-verbal communication, which is proxemic communication. In the second half, we are going to talk about another branch of non-verbal communication, which is haptic. All right. So, the both are very interesting topics, very not discussed so much in, in classes, uh, you know, around. So, I am taking this liberty to discuss these very important but less discussed topic. Though we all understand what they are gradually, the moment I will discuss, you will be able to correlate. That's my promise. All right, friends. So, what is, uh, you know, proximic? communication to understand that let us go back to the initial discussion maybe couple of weeks ago when we talked about non-verbal communication and we discussed about body language, kinesic communication, proxmic. So, there were seven different branches I showed to you in the previous lecture somewhere. So, in the last two lectures we have discussed body language and then kinesic communication. So, today in sequence, we are going to take the third branch or third variant of non-verbal communication, which is proxemic communication first and then haptic communication, ok. So, we intend to cover all these seven branches of non-verbal communication in sequence. So, that is why today we are discussing the third one, proxemic communication. So, this word little, you know, is little difficult to pronounce. So, we can pronounce it as proxemics, right? So, you can see I have you know, specifically written on the slide proxemics or praxemics. So, praxemic. So, proxemics or praxemics. This is how we pronounce this word. So, proxemics is basically the study that how space, the distance, Space is used in human interactions. We all talk to a thousand people in our life, millions of people in our life, sometime in private, sometime in public places, sometime at work, sometime at home, office, classroom, you know, at different locations, at different places. And if you try to recall or understand, you know, you will feel uh, that the distance we maintain in our communication with various people is not never similar. Not only that, uh, you know the distance with the same person may vary from time to time depending upon what kind of emotions we are expressing. Alright, so this particular proximic communication is all about studying the distance, the space between the human interaction. So, how much, you know, people maintain as a distance from other or space or how much space they create around them unconsciously, you know, we, we do not know. We may not have ever thought about it, ki, no, how much distance do I maintain in my general talk. Right now, when once I am discussing, you may pay attention, but this has become altogether a complete science, a complete studies. There are so many studies going on and talking about the structure of proximic communication. That how does a person, uh, how do uh, you know, uh, how do people create some structure around them of the space? right of the distance. So, that may, that is generally happen, happening unconsciously. But there are people who are public speakers, there are people like us who are teachers, who are interacting with students on daily basis. We may have developed it unconsciously or with some little effort, right. So, majority of the people who are not into public speaking, 
who are just talking interacting at work or at home they are most of the times unconscious about the structure they created in their mind but people like you know politicians public speakers professors like us they are somehow conscious about the space around them they create while te- talking to the students or to anybody okay so the amount of space people prefer to have when engaging in conversation with others this varies this varies from person to person right so let's just imagine you know uh, if you 10 if you 10 of your uh, you know classmates are there around you one may be coming very close to you while talking about a particular movie or discussing about a fair or a fest another person may still be maintaining a distance of a feet or 2 feet right there could be uh, one another person who is probably not keen to come even to that closer even 2 feet closer right he is or she is maintaining about 4 5 feet of distance sitting far away at the desk and still discussing right so so even a friends group you know a group of people who are friends studying together talking chatting together it's not that each one of them is comfortable sitting close to everyone right few people would you know would maintain a special distance from a particular person you know a girl not liking another boy so she maintains a distance this is a conscious effort but unconsciously too we are maintaining some distance from others or we are maintain or maintaining some closeness to other it all depends what kind of uh, you know relationship you are in or what kind of position or uh, i mean place you are at so this amount of space the people prefer it varies from person to person as i said right in different setups as well not only it varies from person to person it does vary from a culture to the another culture okay so just imagine you know there are cultures uh, especially you know if i would not like to name it uh, you can imagine which culture i am referring to there it is not preferred to come close especially you know between two genders two genders generally will not come and shake hand in a particular culture you can try to correlate if you i don't want to name that culture here right so this space uh, the amount of space we create it does vary from person to person and culture to culture let's take few more examples you know at your work at your home let's say with your mom generally you maintain almost no distance you are sitting very close to mom hugging her you know uh, you know very close to her uh, holding her palm or, you know you are putting your head in her lap you are quite close for most of the time but the day you had a fight with mom because they, we we don't have all you know all the good days around we do have few bad days also in our life so let's say a particular day when you didn't like uh, you know mom's uh, response or mom's uh, non cooperation or mom's comment or mom's refusal or permission not given i mean for something so you are angry with her and you are maintaining a lot of distance she is talking but you are not looking at her you are still sitting far away but in general had you been free had you been around her you would have been you know talking to her while quite being close to her but on that particular day you are not doing that so the, you are the same person you have the same uh, you know home i mean location is same geographical location is same two person your mom and you are the same right relationship is same mom and and a son or a daughter but but your space management is different on that day because you are not happy with your mom on that day you may be angry for any reason that's not the concern here so here you are you are unconsciously or consciously you are distancing from her you are keeping some long distance than a regular one right 
So, most of the time when you are in, in your flow of talk, when you are just talking with you do not have anything on your head against her, then, then the distance you are maintaining is unconscious. Of course, that too has happened you know gradually that has evolved gradually. As a child we start you know we are being fed by our moms and we, we, we grow in our mom, mom's lap and gradually you know when we grow el older so the dist so we do not go so close to mom every day to, pa to father to sister you know every day. So it has to do with the age as well ok. So, this particular concept you know where we study the amount of space people prefer while communicating is proxemic communication right. So, there are so many more terms which are used to study this relational distance is a scientific term is a technical term relational distance closeness proxemic you know the proximity the two houses are in proximity to each other that that uh, school is in proximity to my home you know in close proximity they were sitting in close proximity we have we have been using this proximity word quite often in our life ok. But proximix communication has come up from that word only ok. So, so you can now correlate very well affinity how affi you know so affinity is the closeness the association. So, these are the couple of words which we use in lieu of proximic communication. So, in all the proximic communication is the study of nature, degree and effect of sepatial separation, individual naturally maintain and of how this separation relates to environment and culture. So, so th there could be environmental issue you know your same mother but at that day environment at home was not good. The environment in a particular country or a city is different. A male is not supposed to be standing close to a female, right? There are societies, still there are many countries where there are such restriction or cultural issues are there, right? So, uh, in total the study of the nature, degree and effect, you know, the in individuals which naturally maintain. So, we are talking about the natural, men, you know, unconscious thing. So, for few days if you have consciously been distancing from your mother on all the occasion when she is fighting with you or when she is scolding you, even that is natural becoming natural response. You know it is not happening for the first time. There could be many occasions when you were scolded by your mom or you were scolded by your friend or you were scolded by a neighbor or your teacher, right? Your your dad for that matter. So, even, even in such situations we develop a natural distance. So, when, uh, when we are studying this nature why it is happening, the degree, how much, the extent, the effect you know. So, these this particular study is known as proximic communication. Now, who is who introduced this uh, proximic communication. This term was introduced by Edward Hall. He was an anthropologist. He introduced this uh, term for the first time in early 1960s in 60s ok. And based on what he wrote you know, gradually it came up as, or it developed as a theory. We call it as Hall proximic theory 1966 ok. So, Hall's concept of proximic considers human use of space within the context of culture. He discussed this theory you know in particular uh, paying attention to culture, how culture affects the human distance between you know while communicating to others. So, human use of space basically the space management between the humans between the human interaction or habitant right. So, the concept of proximic is basically it, it uh, evolves around the space uh, we, we maintain naturally or unconsciously uh, and that does vary from culture to culture, person to person and many more factors uh, do affect it. Then 
this particular uh, proximic communication has four zones as defined by Hall. He has defined four different zones. So, what are those four zones? The first is intimate. So, what is the intimate uh, you know zone? Just imagine you know a girlfriend sitting close to her boyfriend, either no distance or maximum 2 feet, they are sitting just this close right or, or you know holding tightly to each other. So, 0 to 2 feet, you know a mom holding her baby in her lap, this is also intimate ok. A father, a mother holding their child into their arms, even that is intimate. You know, somebody got hurt and uh, or somebody lost some family member, a friend consoling him or her, closely, tightly holding him or her, it, that is also intimate, ok. So, this zone is 0 to 2 feet and this is known as very intimate this is used in very particular situation and where we have personal relations generally ok. So, intimate zone is meant for personal relations even the cultures which do not allow uh, you know closeness of male or female in open even if we have the two different gender married to each of course, there would be intimate moment and the distance could be 0 to 2 feet right. So, this zone is for intimate moments of bad or good nature of you know whichever type of situation it is. Then the second zone is known as personal. So, what is the personal zone? Personal zone is from 2 to 4 feet. So, now you can imagine what all situations do we uh, know, can we count under this zone. You know as we took an example of friends friends sitting together in a cafeteria eating some snacks right. So, somebody has hand on the uh, back of the other friend you know holding like this have arm on the thighs of the other friend just neck on you know bending uh, neck on or head on the uh, other person irrespective of the gender you know uh, this is what is personal. A mom sitting just close to you watching TV together your friend sitting together close to you watching TV together, a friend sitting close to you in the classroom studying together on the same desk, you do not have distance right. When two friends are sitting together on the same desk, this is something you come across every day. So, even that is 2 to 4 feet, even there is no 2 feet different distance that is we cannot take it as intimate, it is still personal because it could be less than uh, uh, 2 feet even. So, but 2 to 4 feet in journal is the personal zone. So, two people sitting close mom, dad, ch ch uh, you know uh, even if a personal space can be created at workplace as well. If we have cubicles at any workplace where the distance between the cubicles is uh, between 2 to 4 feet even that is taken or known as personal zone right. So, there are so many examples you can imagine. So, personal zone then coming to the third zone social zone. So, what is the social zone is 4 to 12 feet. Most of the time if you imagine if your teacher is teaching you in a classroom he or she just generally will be standing at least you know 3, 4, 5, 6 feet away from the first desk in the beginning. This is how the classrooms are generally designed. This is how a teacher would generally you know so that she could look at the last guy uh, in that room as well as uh, you know there is a reasonable distance that uh, you know when she is speaking uh, you know she can see the uh, she can interact twice. She can look into the eyes of the even at the first bench and the last bench as well. So, such interactions are social interactions uh, in a meeting you know in a boardroom when there is a meeting happening uh, the, the guy who is speaking the person who is chairing is generally sitting little far away from the people who are attending who are, who are invited. So, the convener of the meeting would generally be uh, around 4 5 feet away from the first 2 you know first 2 3 people in, in the sitting in the beginning of the room 
right? So, that is kind of social zone. Then we have public zone more than 12 feet. Public zone, you know, you can imagine if you have an auditorium in your college, in your university, and there's a speaker coming standing at the die, you know, at the dais in the auditorium room. So the the platform which we have, which we call it as stage, is generally you know big enough that it creates a distance of at least 12 feet. After the stage, there's there's still some good gap of couple of feet, you know, maybe five, seven, ten feet minimum is there. So that kind of uh, you know zone which we create for such interactions which are in large is known as a public zone. You know, uh, the same thing could be, ha uh, you know, taken as an example. Nowadays, elections are going on. Uh, today only I saw a couple of, uh, you know, announcements regarding the municipal corporation elections scheduled on 4th of this month in the uh, 4th of next month, December in Delhi, right? So, there are a couple of rallies taking place where the politicians are coming addressing to people, right? They, they would be maintaining a public distance and if it is a small get together, you know, they are meeting in RW's office, they are meeting in a park to small group of people, invited ones, then it could be social even, 4 to 12 feet. There are 20, 15 people and then the distance could be 4 to 12 feet, that is a social zone. But if the same guy addresses a bigger mob or larger, uh, you know, population and then the stage will be created in a way or the dice will be put up in a way that he or she addresses the person and the distance is 12 feet. So, that zone is public zone. So, this these zones were introduced by Hall in his theory. And they all have to do with the communication. You know, we are not talking about the space management or, or the, uh, you know, location management. We are talking about communication. That how do we communicate with others and how much distance do we maintain naturally, uh, you know, unconsciously or consciously for times. Now, what all factors uh, affect proximic communication? As I said, three important factors. Number one, the gender. So, even in a very advanced society, you will see that if the the two you know two people of a, of opposite gender, if they do not know each other, they will not stand so close by, right? Irrespective of how advanced that society is. All right. So, it, so gender generally of opposite. Uh, sex, they stay away from each other, they maintain a little distance, you know, personal or social distance in general. So, this is something which is very, very, uh, you know, well established in the minds of people because this is what we have assumed, perceived as humans, right? We have been taught, we have been, this has been discussed and it has been accepted in different cultures. Right? So, gender is one factor which affects the proximic communication. That how much space would be maintained between uh, the gender of two, uh, two opposite genders while communicating. Second is age. Age also does matter. A very young child does not know that he or she is meeting or interacting with a, a, or no, a, with a person of opposite gender. A young girl, two, three, four years, may not be aware of keeping a distance from a gender, uh, you know, from from an opposite gender, irrespective. So just it's because he is such a or she is such a, ch a young child, doesn't know. So age also decides the gradually the same child of one, two years, you know, all the time in his mom's uh, or her mom's lap, gradually starts distancing, you know. They may be connected mentally, emotionally, but while talking, while talking, there is a distance. You know, they, they still maintain distance because of the age. Okay. Then uh, culture. So, the culture also does affect the factor, you know, as an important factor that how much proximic 
uh, how the approximate communication would take place between two people. As I said, uh, you know, a particular religion, particular culture, few countries in, uh, in Middle East, they do not allow two genders coming close. The culture is such that uh, even the males stay away from each other, right? So, culture to, it varies culture to culture. You know, we say uh, uh, so called modern society, but you will be surprised to know that in so called modern world, the western world, consciously people maintain one and a half to two feet of distance, even you know, talking to the opposite gender, so called uh, advanced uh, economies, advanced cultures as well. Even they have developed a habit of maintaining a social distance of. So, it, it varies from, so they, they, feel, they take it rude if you come close to a person and talk. You are supposed, because everybody has his or her body or door. People, few people spit like, you know, while talking. Few people have different body or door. So, as a culture in advanced, even advanced countries, there is a practice of maintaining, you know, about two feet distance and while talking to a stranger or to a known person at workplace. A very interesting study by Gifford in 1987, it came up and it said something very interesting that males interacting with other males, they require more personal space than a female talking to another female. Right? Is it not very interesting? You may not have ever you know, seen it or try to observe it. So, if now in future try to observe this, this study is established one, is claimed one, which says that a male talking to another, another male requires more personal space than a male talking to a female, irrespective of the culture or age. Alright, the last part I want to discuss is importance of proximic communication. You know, urban spaces, uh, cubicles at workplace, they all are designed while keeping in mind the personal space required, the social space required. So, that planning is done by this. Uh, allows to set up space in the most functional and optimal way possible. So, this is because of the proximic communication that how much space People need to communicate with each other. You know, we design audis, auditoriums, we design uh, small uh, conferences room, workshop places, etc., etc., worship places even, right? Uh, it allows peaceful coexistence between two, uh, between different people if this, because of this study, because now we have def defined zones and it also helps us to avoid unpleasant situation. Two females, you know, one can object that why you are standing so close. We have seen p females objecting males to why he or she or why he is close, you know, standing or coming so close to her. So, that is an unpleasant situation that can be avoided if everybody is aware of the proximic communication, the distance required, right? So, I hope you all could understand this very interesting, less discussed concept of proximic communication. So, thank you very much for being with me. Thanks. See you soon.